added a note to yours too, Jake. My new phobia. The fear of repetitive yes. sounds. Yes, that's actually a thing. So I put that on there if you want that information. I did not know that was a real phobia. Uh, it's new. It's brand. Oh, it's actually yeah. not called that back in the 20s. I think that's okay. a bad thing. It's something that's been that's like coming out in the last 10 years is like having an actual definition. Yeah. Repetitive sounds happen a lot. <laughs> and that's I why he's going to have too. So. And you didn't see a therapist at all, did you? Yet? No. Okay. I right, so we are. It. Where are we? I'm not even shut out all November 12, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> or just let them run down. Uh, no, I've actively stopped that shit. Okay. At this point. Out the window it goes. <laughs> Call Cthulhu, introductory group. This might be the last game of this we play this semester. I'm not sure yet. I know next month's going to be a mess. I usually don't schedule much gaming wise because of exams and people just too busy and holidays and all that shit. So. But uh, what eventually I will do is move you guys into the regular group once that group switches over to seventh edition, which I'm hoping will happen early January, if not late December. This group is like four people. I know a lot of people can't make it. We might also try to figure out if we can reschedule that game, um, maybe a Thursday night instead of Saturday, Sunday. But I'm gonna open that up to discussion by everybody. Do not maybe. And try to figure. Huh? Because next semester I'm gonna have all my classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. No, but it'd be Thursday night. It'd be after classes. My other D&D uh, group goes Thursdays. Oh, sorry. It depends on what my life is. Right, exactly. We'll figure it out. I just want to put it out there for people. Okay. So Kyle kind of might have an opportunity to actually play a little bit again, because I think he's been missing it. But again, I don't want to also exclude anybody, so we'll see. There's anyway. Where my other D&D group meets. Tell them they have to change. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really enjoying that group? Really? I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't saw the look on his face. Don't make me be honest. <laughs> I've heard nothing but complaints about what they're not watching. About his other D and D group. I don't know which group it is that he was complaining about, but it was about something. Watch us! I was complaining about you. I'm just looking. We're perfect. Shut your mouth. You want to get stabbed? She'll do it. All right. I hit people. Uh, it is. Several months since you went, and you went to the haunted house with these people. Um, like, it's probably been a couple of years. That was in 1922. It's going to be 1924, this scenario is. Oh. So, you haven't seen these other people in a long, long time. Oh, yeah. He kind of has to. His sanity's at nine. They're all the same person. Even after so, even after eight months of psychotherapy, he is still sanity nine. You us, and I was like, what do you mean? They were there? Yeah, I know. You two guys, uh, it's been two years since you've seen these people. You know that your friend Daryl has, uh, from what le- uh, w- from letters that he's written you, has been seeing a psychologist pretty regularly. It's being paid for by, what's his name, Gloverleaf or Cloverfield or whatever that guy's name was that you met. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know. It's like he met him once. Pretty sure it's and it's been two years. So uh, Daryl's uh, in a bad way. Um, you probably have visited with them. Actually, we can do vignettes first. Let's just start with Cloverfield. Okay. Uh, well, who do you turn over and who, what do you want to explore? Uh, I want to talk to Carl. Carl, Carl Sappington. Sappington. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. Carl Sappington. Uh, okay. So, yeah. You're ta- what do you want to talk to Carl about? Can I try and talk to him about what I saw? Um, like in last session? Like Yeah. He's... Uh, Put off and disturbed by this quite extensively. Yeah. Um, he also he dropped the name Nyarlat Hotep to you last time, mm-hmm. uh, months ago, or sometime in between. Can I try and figure out more about Nyarlat Hotep? Uh, Nyarlat Hotep, yes. Um, he, uh, all right. He he doesn't know a lot, but he knows somebody who does. Yeah, okay. Do. There is a Dr. Joseph Murrow, a PhD. <laughs> Of classical studies. He used to work for uh, New York University. Okay. Uh, he doesn't anymore. He's re- since retired and he lives in Pennsylvania now. Okay. In Fort McKelvey, Pennsylvania. Okay. But, um, but he warned you that from what little he knows of Nyala Hotep, the messenger of the gods of a thousand masks, it is a very dangerous thing to pursue and advises you against it. No, of course. You know, playing called Cthulhu, I ignore. Twitch. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. I will learn the secrets of the universe. Is there any given my otherworldly desire? Is there any? Um, but he can give you like a letter of recommendation okay. or some kind of thing. So if you go see Doctor, uh, if you go see Doctor Murrow, should I add that 
my paper. Uh, no, don't add that. If you haven't met him yet, unless you meet him, then you can add him as a contact okay. or whatever. Um, but yes, he's one. He'll give you like a letter of recommendation. He like takes one of his cards. He writes on it, Doctor Murrow, Please tell this gentleman anything he wants. Uh, I trust him. It's pretty much what he writes, and he signs it for you. And he hands that off to you, okay. so you've got that. Is there any like any more general information about this occult? That uh, he doubts good? you'll be able to find it. Um, he suggests rare book rooms, uh, private libraries. Uh, he mentions Miskatonic University up in Arkham, Boston, Arkham, Massachusetts might have some information, mm-hmm. uh, but he's not for sure. Okay. Can I like put out? Can I try to like buy a book? Like, if, is anyone selling? He, does, he would suggest going to rare bookstores, okay. and you're going to have to be very lucky to find anything about any of that, because a lot of this stuff is very, very, very... People don't people don't, inv- don't look into this, and those who do tend to bad things happen to them. Yeah. That's why he's nervous about talking to you about it. Okay. He asks you not to use his name okay. in any, like, used bookstores, or if you run into wild-eyed people, just... <laughs> no, don't use his. Don't drop his name. Can I send Winters to try and go to these some of these stores if yeah. in New York? Yeah, um, Winters can go. Winters will go look. Um, sort of that eight month time. Um, um, what do you find anything? What's your luck? It's yeah. fifty five. Give me a hard luck check. Divide your luck by half. It's gonna be twenty seven. Give me twenty seven or less. No, it's it's gonna come down thirty five. It's gonna come down stri- strictly almost. Totally to luck in this case. Okay. He is not in that time, but he continues to look. Um, when you send him out to get, when he goes out to get the grocery shopping, he goes to his bookstores, makes inquiries, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Nothing happens. Mm-mm. Okay, and then I feel like I'm paying more credence to astrology since. Well, she... that was your vignette was dealing with Sappington. Oh, so that's. No, right. I mean, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do one for each character, just kind of to help develop background okay. stuff. Sorry. Um, no, 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 that's okay. Yeah. Um, but since these are just individual one-on-one, I want to keep them to five to ten minutes tops. Okay. Jacob, what do you got? What do you want to explore about your character's background? One of the things on that left side there, on the back, on the left side, one of those connections or items or uh, you could even do, if your character has scars and stuff, we could do like flashbacks, that kind of thing. Anything that you want to just explore as a, for your character in just a couple minutes to kind of flesh them out a little bit. In between scenarios, essentially, is where this happens. I've got something prepared for you in addition to what you want to do. Um, well, over, over the span of the last two years, I kind of became a recluse. I can, okay. I can t- continue to do my job, but I know... What is your job? I work... Are you a mechanic? I was a soldier. You were a soldier. What, do you, what did we figure out that you do Marine. as your, like... <laughs> I was thinking about Yori, sorry. That's right. Yori was a damn marine biologist. Um, in the 20s? Yeah, what would you... Yeah, that's what I said. But he did some marine. research, and apparently they existed. In the I thought he was a marine that was also a biologist. He was a marine who was also a marine biologist. It was, <laughs> anyway, sorry. what did we figure out your job Oh, was? yeah, I work in the steel mills. Okay, that makes sense in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you just have... It's just like... I go to work, I go home. All of, None of the clocks on my walls work. You did you break them? Happens. Yes. Okay, so they're like in, smashed, uh, but they're no, still on the wall. Yes. So they're, they're like smashed, broken. But they're on the wall. Okay. They were all smashed at the exact, almost okay. the exact time, within minutes of each other. So they all still read the same time. <coughs> okay. Okay. Maybe what, too often. Well, what background thing do you want to explore here for a few moments? Um, I mean, it could be one of your contacts. Um, the your psychological issues go without saying. Um, I wrote my mother and okay. my father. And now, they're in Poland, right? Yes. Okay. My entire incredibly large extended family. You is. wrote... Oh, yeah, okay. I don't actually give you... You just write your mother and your father. I have a huge extended family. just have family. a huge family. <laughs> With, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wrote them to try and explain what happened to me. I actually tried to describe it in detail in a letter. Oh, wow. Okay, this ghost story thing. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, shit. So you get a letter back from your mom, who advises you to remain calm, notes that uh, great Aunt Nita had a very similar experience. These are Catholic people, by the way. Oh, they're Catholic. Devoutly Catholic. Okay, okay. Uh, she re- recommends that you talk to a priest, See, to be please. quite honest, and possibly um, uh, if uh, go to confession, you know, that kind of thing. 
But she does note that that it's not it's not unique. Aunt Nita had a uh, had a similar experience. She lived in a haunted house for uh, 48 years. You think that's a four? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe it's an eight. It's hard to tell. Uh, letters a little smart. And um, she was fine by the end. She was she was fine. And you you recognize the you're not sure the great aunt. You think it was a great aunt it was uh, one of your grandmother's yeah, sisters. You think? Maybe you have such a huge family. You don't you can't keep track of me. But that's her main main thing to say is to uh, to see a priest. To see a priest. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm going to go and if, if you're living in that, if you're going back to that house to have it exercised, is her thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can go see a priest. There's definitely a. I'm sure there's a Catholic church in. Uh, where are you from? Johnsonville. Yeah, Johnstown. Johnstown. In Johnstown. Um, you can uh, you can add a priest to your. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to start getting some religion? Because of this whole situation. I think so, yes. Okay, so you can flip that over, and under beliefs, ideological beliefs, you can add Catholicism. And let's call our priest Father... Uh, Dickie. Father... No. <laughs> Father Dickie. No, Father uh, Patrick... Um, um, McDonald? Dickens? Richard. Patrick McDonald? Patrick Richards? Should be. Like, uh, I like an idea of a cat. Would you stop? Donald. That'd be Dickies. Oh no. Um, Donald. Oh yeah. I like Father uh, Father Patrick Donald. Who's not Irish, but is obviously of Irish descent. You're no fun. Um, I'm very. No, not you're not fun. fun. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> quiet, quiet. You. Um, okay, so add him, and he's in Johnstown. If you want to put a note in there, uh, and um, he's willing to, you know, over the course of. It's two years between the scenarios. You mm-hmm. would have written those letters, so you had plenty of time. You could convert to Catholicism. Um, go in, you, you know, the, you have to learn several teachings. Uh, then you go to confession. Then you go to confirmation. And it, it's a process. It's not a hard process. And he's glad to have you in the congregation. Um, I'll have to look up what Catholic churches might have been in Johnstown at the time, possibly. Because uh, I like to use real things whenever I can. What are you doing? Did you make a little hat for me? Not a hat. Oh my god, how did you do this? It's Give me a number and a letter and a hat. No, I have one. I can't write on it. <laughs> anyway, um. You know, so. Uh, Catholicism actually mean story wise and mechanic wise? It's something that you can use, um, help yourself sanity wise. Does uh, it actually help me sanity wise right now? No. No. Um, no. What, what happens is it's like he used his dog to go in the woods and try to help himself. And you make a sanity fail. check, and if you fail, you lose a point of sanity. And if you succeed, you can get some sanity back in your downtime just by saying, hey, uh, this is an important thing to me. Um, if you fail, it also can cause damage to your connection. Like, you could suddenly, even though you're new to this, you suddenly have a crisis of faith. And in regards to Catholicism, maybe you decide, I, I just can't handle it. Catholicism is obviously not right. Blah blah blah. He he doesn't trust his dog like he used to. Yeah. So it, it damages the relationship or modifies the relationship. Uh, you can also use things like uh, items, treasure possessions. Um, you might lose it if you if you if you try to use that to help yourself. I was about to ask thing. if I can have a crucifix. Yeah, you can have a crucifix. Add it to your collection. You can actually put. I'll actually allow you to have put that under treasured possessions. Uh, maybe Catholicism actually makes you feel more is comforting to you to be like. These are the things I can believe in, and they make sense. Not like that shit I saw up in up in uh, up in Massachusetts. That didn't make any damn sense. It was awful. The other thing I want to have happen to your character is, um, at some point, you and Willen, Willen, Wallen, Wallen. That's right. You and Wallen get together uh, when his brother comes to visit him, and so you get to meet his brother, which is what's his brother's name? James. James Wallen, who was not in the war, was he? Nope. And is apparently and unbelievably a lumberjack who lives in Cleveland. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Uh, maybe he's just a tree cutter down he, now. He, guy. he drives out of town to do his work. Okay. So you also probably could do work for the city, pruning trees back from power lines, cutting down trees that need cut in city limits and that kind of stuff. Okay. You could still get a job as a lumberjack, and your skills at least will come to play. So you end up meeting him. And the two of you hit it off while Daryl, like, mumbles in the corner or whatever he does. <laughs> and he's freaking out all the time. Uh, well, well, it's a bit better now. Well, <laughs> it eventually becomes a bit better. Would James know anything about your condition? Because I think he was going to write to you. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, 
James and Daryl have been writing back and forth. I, I assume that, because you did your vignette with, yeah. with James before, so... James knows what's going on. A little, kind of. Not some of the kind of. You know that some weird things have happened to James in the past at some point. You don't know. Actually, some, something out west. Uh, yeah, make me a sanity check. Strange shit. Give James a sanity check. If you fail it, um, we're going to knock you down a few points. Pass it. You pass it by three points. So knock yourself one sanity off from where your starting sanity is. Um, something happened out west. Something happened out west. Uh, we haven't decided yet what. Oh, right, I forgot it. I forgot that both our characters are named James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wallen, Wallen, and Cloverfield. Okay, so you've got a few more uh, connections now. Um, uh, if you want to use one of those connections to try to increase your sanity, I would need you to actually use one not Catholicism. Well, you could use Catholicism too. Um, you could try to use one of those to try to help yourself out. But again, oh, uh, where is the? There we go. How would you make it so tiny? You tore it in half. Yeah. Self help. Like so what you do is you tell me how you're going to use that to to try to like help your sanity. Um, you hold on, don't make any rolls yet. If you what? Oh, you get a bonus die if you use your key connection. Oh, I might have missed that before. No, um, no bonus for you. If you make it, you can get one d six sanity. But if you fail, we have to revise that part. You lose a sanity point, and we have to revise. That point. Oh, oh, that was the special one. Okay, okay. If you use just a normal, is one of them? One of them's marked with a star, right? That's like your special. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you use that one, then you get to use the bonus die. If you use anything else, it's just a regular sanity check. And if you make it, you gain one d six sanity, and you're reaffirmed. And if you okay. fail it, you lose a point of sanity, and we have to modify whatever that thing is in a kind of a negative way. So I might have screwed you up. Screwed up for you. Sorry. But you still fail the checks. So. Yeah. Why at you? Mm-hmm. I'm still learning this game too, as fast as I can. Yeah, I do. So is that something that you want to try to do? You could better say you could have a, you could do one of those if you want in the, in your downtime. I'm fine. I, I'm learning as fast as I can. I'm going to do that. No. What do you want to connect it to? I'm going to connect it to the priest that I just met. Okay. This will probably be someone's after you meet him. Um, uh, you talk to him and try to gain some comfort for the horrible things you've seen. So. Uh, After several months, I actually open up to him about what happened. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So make a sanity check. Uh, you get? I got 61 and I have 30. You have 30? Okay, so lose a point of sanity. Uh, you put... Uh, this this has a bad effect on you with the priest. Um, yes, there should... Oh, no, I didn't bring it out. Uh, so let's see, how can that affect the priest? How does that affect your standing with the priest? Oh, you get angry? Do you start smashing all the clocks around? Hit him in the face. Do you hit him in the <laughs> Hit him in like, the face. You lose your temper at some point when he's trying to he obviously tries to comfort you, it doesn't help, it just makes things worse. Put it through the window. He tries to dismiss what I saw as hallucination. Okay. Hallucination. And yeah, he that actually makes a lot. Oh, okay. And so how does that cause a problem with between between the two of you? I mean, do you have a reaction to this or do you just not like this guy anymore? Um, do you want to find another church? Yeah, I go, I'm actually going to actually okay. go ahead and go find another Catholic church okay. in town. Uh, so you, how do you feel about this priest now that is a negative thing? Okay. I mean, you don't have to attack him. You can. Yeah. No, I'm not going to attack him. Okay. Good, but... <laughs> Get arrested for assault. Oh, <laughs> My story ends you before we begin, then. Um, well, how do we, what do we add to, that, to the priest's name that is a negative? Well, distrust Father John. Maybe he's working for him. Ugh. Or Father Patrick. I tend to overthink these kind of things. Um, don't yeah, I definitely don't trust him anymore. So okay. I distrust. Yeah, put distrust with that priest. And then we'll say that you just drop out of sight. You don't even say anything to him before you leave the church. Just go find another church, Catholic church somewhere. Yep. And start going there. Just find those eggs. Can you make him popcorn? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you fill me a cup of uh, that juice? Yeah. Thanks. Give me a while you're up. Is that what you're doing? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd do it. So James Walling has... His brother told him all that stuff. We already dealt with that last game session. Yep. 
Uh, what do you want to What do you want to explore on James Wallen's background? Uh, he is going to yeah. go on an anniversary oh. dinner with his wife. James is married. Yes. Oh, nice. What's her name? Uh, Write her name down. Oh. Down there. Seems pretty good about this. I'm too handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Is your character straight? Yeah, she she had the man that she loved. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth. Okay, so Elizabeth Wallen. Y'all have any kids? Uh, one tiny baby boy. Nice. We hired a sitter for that. What's the baby boy's name? <laughs> Little Toby. It's an Elizabeth and a James. It's probably a, it's probably a Chris. It's probably like a. Another Christian name. John. John, or Andrew, or Patrick, or... Michael. You know what, or Michael. You know what I mean? Yeah. That sounds like a family that's probably either Catholic or very... Or, very, or influenced by Christian. Uh, Elizabeth is Catholic. Uh, James believes in, like, the natural world. Okay. Wow. That's an interesting relationship. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys go for your anniversary dinner. Oh, it's very nice. You going out to eat? Yep. Um, uh, well, actually... Maybe. I bought a few steaks. We're going to the cabin in the woods that I own. That's uh, a terrible that, place. Uh, in Atlanta? Down in Georgia? In that's not family Georgia. house? You had a family house in Georgia, didn't you? No. You know, that's that was in Ohio when uh, Daryl went to visit James. Oh, okay. Going out to the cabin in the woods, having a romantic night together in the cabin. Oh, okay. Well. All right. That is nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, James is really cheap. Yeah, you won't even spring for a, a, a dinner and a movie, a moving picture. How is the relation between Daryl and his wife? Uh, James and his wife? What is in the, in the 24? <laughs> Nosferatu? Uh-huh. Actually, in 24, yeah, sounds fun. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, a nice romantic weekend, or day, or night, uh, or whatever. The relationship between them, I'd say, is good. They do have occasional fights, but it's nothing good. They've only how long they've been married? Uh, they've been married about four years now. Okay. So you have a real nice time with your wife. Uh, I, I just slap you. <laughs> Is she from Cleveland? Uh, yeah, she. Well, not specifically Cleveland. Not she moved there when she was uh, around a teenager. This okay. is your new character, right? Yes. Yeah, this is James. Um, Daryl was single and miserable. Yep. <laughs> mainly because he's crazy. Alright, so, um, yeah, you guys have a pleasant now. weekend. <laughs> he's a crazy cat person now. I'll protect you, please. You make nice memories. Um, do you have sex, protected sex? Nope. Or not protected. Are you wanting another kid in your family? Is that even a thing in the 20s? Yeah. Yeah, there's kind of stuff in the 20s. Uh, yes. He, what are they made He's up? having protected sex. Mm-hmm. Just Probably like, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. They had, like, pig intestine condoms and stuff. No. Great I think they're plastic by the 20s. Plastic. Ah, uh, please don't destroy my house. The whole fridge just was like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right I have a big butt, I'm sorry. Just throw it out. Get my back right out of the way. Sorry. Right out. All right. Over my head. Come <laughs> on. Right. Yeah. You have a good weekend. No. All right. Nurse Blunt. Frau Blue Crow. Frau Blue Crow. Who am I doing? Petro? That's right, Petro. Last name. I need to write these names down again. Every now, Frau Blue James Wallen. Oh yeah, another funny thing. James uh, Clover. Elizabeth is only five foot tall, <laughs> and okay. James is seven foot two. Fuck! <laughs> Holy crap! What the hell? I'm six. He's a fetish art. <laughs> what's, your, what's your character's name again? <laughs> he likes him. Marco Pavel. Marco. M a r c o p a v i l. What's your name again, Caitlin? Edna Petro. Edna Petro. So, what do you want to explore of your? I don't care. Well, you pick something. Her boy be missing. Her boy's missing. Is she still looking for her? Probably. Uh, okay, so it's mostly the correspondence, right? Yeah, so you're writing letters and shit. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I didn't give him a name. Whoops. He disappeared during the war. Yeah, let's give him a name. That's a good way to explore this background. That's a very Russian first name. Cut me off. Mikhail. <laughs> what? 
goofing off. No. <laughs> Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai. Mikael. Mikael. I like that one. Anton. What's his last name? Mm. Check off. <laughs> Sure. No. <laughs> Damn it. I don't know. I'm not good with Russian names. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm out. Sure. You're a Petrov. Yeah. You could be uh, also Mikhail. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, Cherninkov. Sure. I don't know what you said, but sure. Cherninkov. Mikhail Cherninkov. He disappeared during World War Two or World, the Great War, right? Yeah. Um, after the Russian was this? So this is before. The Russian Revolution, because the Russians... World War I, but it doesn't matter. Well, that is... Yeah, Great War and World War I, same thing. Uh, 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 it's between, not called World War... Between, between revolutions at this point. Well, the, the, the Russian Revolution started towards the end of the Great War. And so all the Russians the first, left. The first of three. Yeah. Um, the fall of the Romanovs was the first one. <laughs> when was that? It was the end, end of World War I. Right, okay. That was so, the first one. did he disappear before... The Russians left the war because before the end of World War One or the Great War, well, the Russians just <laughs> well. Now we're going. That's what we're doing right now. So when did he disappear? During it. So it was during when they were there when they were still in the Great War yeah. before the Russians left to go back for all the revolution, all the fighting going on back home. Yes, I love to get tired. Yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. please, please drink it. I want. I'd love to see it gone by the time we leave today. Awesome. Um, I take it these are the cups. Yeah, yeah. I put a bunch of cups over there. Um, so it was during the Great War, it was probably 1914, 1915, um, when the trenches lines are just getting settled and stuff like that, because I believe the Russians pulled out in 16, before the Americans came in. It might have been 17, it doesn't matter exactly. Um, how did you find out? Let's, let's explore that first. You're going to come back to my medical tent and say, hey, like you're super sweet and you like me, and you're okay. the only person who would talk to me, because I'm a very handsome woman. You're, very lo- you're, you're a solid woman. Mm-hmm. You're very brusque with people. You basically tell them what to do, and you expect them to do it. I was pretty much his butch, so... You're the little man, right? He was a little experienced, probably a weak little man. And so, at one point, he didn't show up for days. He didn't his body back, he was gone for a week. Okay. Um, and your inquiries were met with, um, like, stone-faced ign- ign- ignoring you. Um, no. until the point where you... Until the point where I lost my train of thought. Until the point where you, um, uh, the Russian Revolution hit, and everybody who was there from Russia was recalled. Mm-hmm. Just basically gone back to fight one side or the other of the revolution. Uh, you know, on the side of the, I don't even know what the two sides were. One were the, um, the oh, people. Bolsheviks. The Red Army. Yeah, that's right, the Red Army and the White Army. The Bolsheviks, the, the people wanting communism, and people yeah, who wanted. Artists. And the Tsarist, that's the one I need. And the one who wanted the Tsars and the royalty to stay in charge. Did you go home then, or did you try to stay at the front in, in the Great War? I was probably needed, since I was medical. Going home? So I was probably needed. Where? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, ah, then I tell me. Need make it up. Places. That's the whole point of this. What? Pretend we need in both places. Yeah, if there's After a civil war going, going on back home. home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're home. Home. That's all I need. That's all I need. Just choose it. So you went home. That's when your inquiries kind of ended for a while because you were very busy. You eventually came to the United States and you started making inquiries via mail, uh, trying to ask about this. About this, um, you get lo- you've got a lot of letters back, and you've probably got a person over there working for you. Like it could be a family member, or it could be somebody you hired, or a friend that you had back home who's trying to find, look into records and stuff. I do have five siblings. So. Okay, one of your brothers or sisters. That's perfect. Um, they're looking into it for you. Uh, when you receive a letter that just says, I can't look into this anymore. We can't look into this anymore. Please do not write me about this anymore. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you, how do you want to do, react to that? Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm assuming I asked one of my brothers. Okay. I don't know who he means by we. But exactly. I'm just like, I'm upset. So I want to find out okay. what happened to him. All right. Are you going to write him back then? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You little bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Something along that line. Like, uh, being very angry and upset. Little steps for my little lovey. Only <laughs> um, men will love me. No one will clean I. You get a telegraph in response to that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is very short. It's not been sent from Russia. 
Um, it's actually sent from Berlin. But it is signed by your brother. It looks like he took a little trip. Good question. He says, um, letters are being read by the government. Stop. Cannot pursue this. Stop. Um, no, the stops are ends of sentences. Yeah, that's how that's a telegram. Telegrams, you denote. He's not telling you stop. No, no, no. Okay, it doesn't matter. You still like don't do it anymore. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Well, anyway, um, family under investigation. Stop. Everyone in danger. Stop. Question mark. Um, (laughs) Um. Um, well, that means that yes. He disappeared in during the war. It means bitch in Russian. Cool. <laughs> um. Um. Then perfect. Look in northern France, and then it signed his name. Sounds like we're going to France. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's the stuff that you've gotten over the last two years between the two scenarios. But apparently, the government has been reading your letters that are going back and forth, which is not surprising. I didn't care. Um, yeah, yeah, but obviously they have been talking to the family and have not been happy with what has been... That your, your pursuit of this is pissing somebody off in the government for some reason. I'm just like a poor missing guy. Exactly. Your brother... I know. That, yeah. It doesn't make sense. Why, right. why? What does it matter? Your brother had to go all the way to Berlin to send this... Apparently, you're guessing he went to Berlin because he felt safer sending from Berlin than sending from Moscow or from... Whatever city in Russia they have the telegraphs, um, and he's giving you—you you think he's giving you pretty much all the information he can. And not long after the telegraph arrives, uh, a letter arrives. Uh, it's a, it's also from him. It's basically an apology. And says, "But I'm glad you have uh, decided to stop pursuing this. Please tell me that you've decided to stop pursuing this." I don't and you get like an idea, like a wink, wink, like, "Please give me this information." You know what I mean? It's not in code, but it's not written in his style. Uh, so it's it, you. You just you intimate that he's trying to tell you to send him a letter saying I'm all done with this. So somebody in the government will read it and then possibly stop worrying about it. Is what you is the kind of way you get this message. It's a weird letter. It's all curly cues and happy. Oh, remember the apple tree? Blah blah blah. Remember the games you used to play? That's one of the things that it is. You guys used to play a lying game um, that where you would lie to your mother. You just throw it away. Yeah. You don't write back. I mean, I can. It's like, up to you. All it is just one word. Fine. <laughs> fine. And it goes back. Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's fine. Just one word. Okay. And, and then you just letters. stop. You just stop. You just stop the correspondence at that point oh altogether. Hmm? You stop correspondence at that point altogether, or do you still write like just casual letters every few months? I mean, probably to say, hey, how you doing? Right. Okay. But other than that, I'm here's like, what I'm up to. Oh, I'm free. I'm not in war torn Russia. Ha 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 ha. Sucks to suck. Okay. So some kind of cover up. It sounds like is going on. The secret police. Some kind of cover up for some reason. Something is going on with Mikhail. We're going on friends, boys. <laughs> Not tonight. Yeah. We might be able to get there before the game ends. Totally. We might. I might try to run the next one once. I want to know where he is. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, that, that's why we. I'm kind of interested too. What is going on here? But that's his shoulders. <laughs> He looks like he's in a prison. What the hell is that? Just his, uh, like his waist? Like flannel and Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, he's seven foot tall. Yeah, I get it. Ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha.